Taking June 22nd off and just hanging out at the La Quinta for the day had really done wonders. We just hung out and relaxed for a day and a half, used the pool, had a good breakfast every morning in the lobby, ordered delivery for dinner, and the hotel had a computer fast enough for me to look at some of my footage for the first time on this trip. On the morning of June 23rd, we had an early breakfast, packed the bikes, and headed for Rock Springs, Wyoming. I think I might have to, I shouldn't have to, really. You have to do what? I might have to boot the program from the starting point. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Or right, well, boot the route, I mean. Why don't I just do that? You do it on the, on the run? Huh? You can do it while you're going? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Otherwise, fight some shade. Coming up, up here at these lights, I think. Okay, got a couple cars to our right. Got them. Oh, that poor bastard got a flat. <clears throat> Look at this. This is Orem, Utah, the home of Orem University. Yeah, and I think. Part of this must be the university. I would imagine. I would imagine there's some kind of party here every day. Yeah. Huh? And uh, can you imagine living in the shadow of these mountains? Huh? Oh, I know. The ride from Orem, Utah, to Rock Springs, Wyoming, is around 265 miles. This was going to be our next to last day before we split up. It was going to be a hot one, but we could also see it was going to be a beautiful day of riding. I like this road already. What's there not to like? I know. She's a beauty. She's a beauty, eh? Hey. Head north, young man. Woo! Look at these mountains. Yeah, wow going through those, that little pass. Holy crap. What a pass. This is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Another good decision. Yeah. Of course, we don't know what the other road would have been like, but I can't picture it being bad. Now that it's, it was on the motorcycle website or blog. They know what they're talking. Oh, look at the waterfall on the right. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, my wow. goodness. Oh. I can't turn my head long enough to get a I good know. shot of it. I know. You have to put it in your memory banks. This is crazy. Oh, and every And all these, like, different mountain ranges are just so different. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Just the way they're created. Scalloping on this one. The river down there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Just beautiful. Just Absolutely. beautiful. We're going to be following that river for a while. You can see why outdoor recreation is such a big thing out here. Yeah. They got plenty of space to do it in. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to get out of this, those big cities very far either. No? No? Nope. Uh, look at this lake. Uh huh. Oh, man. Sweet. <laughs> nice little abode over there. Looking at the lake. 
We are now passing Deer Creek State Park. Beautiful lake coming up. Huh? What's a wake? A lake. What is it? It's this body of water that's smaller than an ocean. Oh, a lake? Yeah. There it is. Put on your GPS. No. I thought I saw it over that hill. Oh. I could be wrong. Maybe it was a mirage. Yeah. What's a mirage? That's, uh, <laughs> when two pe- that's when two people uh, tie the knot, <laughs> and uh, they make a commitment to be together for the rest of their lives. Oh. Uh, that's a mirage? I, be- I believe so. <laughs> I thought that's a covenant. No, no, that's that's where uh, I'm sorry. That's where uh, nuns live, isn't it? What is it? Isn't that where nuns live? Oh, that is true. It's yes, a, it's a covenant, right? Covenant. That's yeah. it. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, make that a comment. I have no comment. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. You don't feel like commenting on that? No, uh, I will not comment. Oh, that's what I thought was a lo- was a lake. Oh, it is, isn't it? It is a lake. Oh. Absolutely. The road and the scenery was beautiful, but the wind was always present. Oh, oh man, that caught me. <laughs> that caught me. I saw it. I felt it just as you did. Oh yeah, now I got. I just said enlarge my GPS. I got a, a wider view, and that's a huge lake. What's that? It's a huge lake. I just uh, expanded the view on my GPS. Oh, yeah. I see it coming up here. Yep. Huge. Huge. I Another deer. God. Huh? Another deer laying dead on the ground. Yeah, well. Oh, God. Oh, my God. That was disgusting. <laughs> I just threw up my mouth. That's okay. <laughs> I did it again. Yep. So we don't need to stop for lunch. No, no. (laughs) Ah, that was gross. That was there a while. That's three deer down. What's that? Three deer down so far. Hey, listen. You see all these dead deers on the road? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Let me get ahead of you. You can go ahead if you want. We stopped at a McDonald's in Roosevelt, Utah, cooled off in the air conditioning, got a cold drink and a bite to eat, and had a really nice lady who worked at McDonald's talk to us about motorcycles for about a half an hour. I went down my base layer and helmet liner to stay cool. We geared up and got back on the road headed for the border of Wyoming. You would think as wide open as this, is that they would have seen that deer coming like a mile away. Well, if it's dark out... Oh, that's right. If they're happy. driving along and the thing springs out in front of right, them from the right, side, right. they never see it. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about nighttime. And truck drivers don't fucking slow down, even if it's daytime. Okay. They don't lock them up. That's why they got those things on the front. Yeah. They're not going to jackknife a truck to save a deer. Now, boom, see you later. Okay. You might want to check that information right after you do the continental. Do what? I said you, want to, you might want to check my information right after you check continental divide. <laughs> I already checked on there. Oh, that's right, you did. That's where the continents come together, right? Yeah, that's where the continents came together. Came together. And why are they divided? Yeah, wow. That's where they would have divided, had they not come together. <laughs> it's, amazing. It's, amazing. it's amazing how those two halves of the Rocky Mountain just fit together perfectly, huh? Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, that was years of glaciers. The glacier kind of smoothed it out. I see. It used to have a ridge. <laughs> Don't you know anything? Jeepers, creepers, rich. you got to learn you everything. I think the thing that I like best about riding out west is the constant change. It seems like you can go from barren desert to
to lush green in a matter of 10 or 15 miles. It was the same with the temperature. We had started many days in the mid to high 30s, only to have it be in the 90s two hours later. Today's ride had been no different. We had been treated to mountain passes when we were leaving Orem, beautiful lake country as we approached Heber City, rolling hills and grasslands through reservoir country, and pine forests with plenty of curvy roads and elevation changes. As we worked our way towards the Wyoming border, it clouded up and started to rain a little bit. We gassed up in Flaming Gorge and contemplated putting on some rain gear. We decided against it. Carl always decides against it. He almost never wears rain gear. As we got closer to the Wyoming border, the terrain continued to change. It got flatter and way more open. We also started to climb in altitude. And the biggest thing, the wind began to pick up. Once we hit Wyoming, the wind was blowing really hard and pretty steady. But you'd get those gusts that would move you sideways three or four feet. There were lots of gravel pull-offs and we talked about stopping to take some pictures and appreciate some of the beautiful views. But we were scared that if we got off our bikes, they'd just get blown over. We continued the ride north on 191 through coal country and we battled the wind for the rest of the day. As always, we provided our own entertainment. By the way, the one, the, the video that's on the, uh, from the mirror mount sucked. On uh, which one? Uh, the, the video that I took with the camera on the mirror. Oh, uh, no way. Yeah, just bouncy. And I don't know, it wasn't like that. I had thought about taking that and uh, putting one of those permanent mounts. Yeah. You know, with the stick them right on the front of the, the um, mic. That guy climbing up your ass? Oh, that would be very steady. What's that? That'd be very steady. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't squirm. <laughs> I said, I, I said, is that guy climbing up your ass? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna mount the camera up my ass. Uh, I'll tell you what, you know, your 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 hearing impairment adds <laughs> adds a whole new dimension. <laughs> to these conversations. <laughs> That'd be it's, like, it's like it's two conversations in one. <laughs> you figure them out. You're always, you feel like, I know he didn't understand me. Based on his comment. <laughs> uh, it's like, let me go back and think about this for a second. <laughs> and the funny part is, I'm just thinking, oh, that's cool. You know, I answered <laughs> I answered what I heard. Oh my God, Rich. Uh, oh, my face hurts right now. <laughs> uh. That's got to be something coming from your bike. That noise I keep hearing. Oh, yeah, it could be. It's like a strap slapping or something. Oh, you know, I do hear, I was hearing that before. It, it's sort of the sound that my, um, the top of my helmet, where you put the shield down, yeah. that thing, when I have my hearing aids and I hear that thing clicking away. What is that? It's it's the, if you feel it, it's got some play in it. Mine does anyway. And that just goes back and forth from the wind and makes a clicking sound. Oh. And I never hear it. I didn't even know it existed. So I put my hearing aids in one time, put the helmet on, and I went, what the hell is that? Oh, I can't stand it. i got to take my hearing aids out. Oh, great. I don't have that luxury. Yeah, I know. Get a new helmet. <laughs> you said drive me nuts. <laughs> it's done a good job. 
Nice, Rich. Real nice. Obviously, long term effects. <laughs> Oh. You just don't get these kinds of vistas up, up north. You know, you get a little bit of it in Vermont, but the, the valleys are a lot narrower, you know? Yeah. I know. This is just vast, you know, as far as the eye can see. Yeah. You know, every place you go, it's like the only thing that stops you from seeing further is you can't see further. The curvature of the earth. Right. <laughs> Other than the constant wind coming in from the west, the rest of the ride up to Rock Springs was uneventful. 191 followed I-80 east for a few miles right at the end of this ride before 191 turned north again. And right at that exit where we got off was the Best Western Outlaw Inn. Very convenient to the highway. It was just starting to sprinkle as we checked in, but we were able to get unloaded before we really got rained on. We got unpacked and cleaned up and walked across the indoor pool courtyard to the restaurant. We had a fantastic meal and really great service. Our plan when we pulled into the Best Western was to have dinner at the hotel, get a good night's sleep, and then the next day, get up and ride the 340 miles up to Buffalo, Wyoming. We'd spend the night there, and then split up the following day. But when we got back to the room after dinner, I decided that it was silly for Carl to ride an extra 600 miles and spend an extra two days on the road just to keep me company all the way up to I-90. I could just as easily get on I-80 right there in Rock Springs and start the trip east. I ran it by Carl. He was in agreement and just like that our ride together had come to an end. Now all that was left was the 2200 mile ride back to Manchester.